Morning guys, David here. Um, this is a little bit on the unconventional side, but I uh, wanted to put together a video today. This is uh, it's New Year's Eve. It's early in the morning. Um, that's why I'm talking still a little low. Don't want to wake up the neighbors. But um, I wanted to put a video together uh, with some of the highlights of the what's been an amazing, amazing three months, guys. Uh, I just had so much fun doing um, the hobby networking group and all these episodes, um, all these podcasts and these live episodes as well. And just wanted to share what I thought were some of the highlights of, uh, really, I, I'm going to say 2020, but really three months and, um, just a very, very heartfelt and uh, sincere thank you to, uh, to all of you. Cause this wouldn't be what it is without you guys. And, uh, it won't continue to be what I hope it continues to become without you guys. So, um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I uh, wish you guys a very, um, happy and healthy, uh, new year. Enjoy it with your family and friends. And I hope you enjoy this, this quick video I put together, um, celebrating some of the, the fun moments that we, we've all had together. Um, remember this, this isn't my channel, this is our channel. And I hope it continues that way uh, for a long time. So thank you guys and take care. Hobby friends, and welcome to today's episode of Hobby Talk. My name is David Baez, and in today's episode, we are going to talk about one of my absolute favorite hobbies, unopened sports cards. With that being said, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome today one of the unopened collectors that really paved the way for me to understand the hobby with everything from market trends, detecting fakes, all that stuff. He's really helped me out a lot. And I'm really happy that uh, he um, agreed to kind of be that that one of the first episodes for me. So please join me in welcoming Mike Serencioni to Hobby Talk. Mike, what's up, buddy? Hey, it's great, great to be here. I'm very honored. You know, for for yeah. me, the hobby always fed my love for the game, and vice versa. And you know, it's just this loving cycle. You know that you know was a pleasure to be a part of and kept me going. Yeah, awesome. I heard there's a good uh, harvest going on in 84 Donruss you know, on your field, right? <laughs> well, that's what we're hoping for. Sometimes, you don't know, is the 84 Fleer or the 84 Donruss going to, you know, pop up? But um, <laughs> all of it's good. Outside of numismatics, what hobby are you most interested in and why? So I, um, I still collect baseball cards. Yeah. Free war in particular. Uh, something that I did as, as a kid. And so many others in that hobby also did as a kid. Yeah. And, um, when I was in my late thirties, my wife told me, you know, you should get a hobby. And uh, she's like, really <laughs> <good. laughs> that um, those first, you know, few that you started collecting, I'm assuming Yankees and baseball into this amazing collection you have right now. Yeah, I mean, I had a lot back in the day, and as time went on and I got older, I actually sold a lot. And there was a point in my life, I might have been down maybe two starting lap figures, believe it or not. And wow. probably in the uh, around 2000, 2001, and then something just clicked again. And I, I went back into it really hot and heavy, and I, I haven't turned back. Since. Second, third grade, back in the – I remember it was uh... – in 91, actually, 1991, my mom bought me a pack of the, if you remember the 1991 uh, Fleer, the the ugly yellow cards. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, well, when I opened my first pack, I, I remember this. I got a Jose Canseco ProVision, and I thought that was the coolest card ever because it <laughs> had the lightning strike in the bat. And all that oh, stuff. yeah, I remember that card. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, whoa, that's that's so awesome. And uh, the item awesome. that is my favorite all time, and it's really not even the most valuable one. And I and I have it. So that is a Yoda and it's sealed. It is tape intact, as you would say. Yeah. Uh, tape on the bottom's good, but it's a magic eight ball Yoda. Ask the Jedi Master. Oh, that is really cool. So I spent a lot of time trying to find a sealed tape intact one. I have one out 
you know, that I can display on my shelf. Mm -hmm. But finding it tape intact, sealed, meant a lot to me. I'm a huge Yoda fan. I was when I was a kid. Yeah. I, you know, I was always a small guy. I'm not anymore, but short in stature, you know. <laughs> and, and, and Yoda was just, uh, that was my thing. So that toy means a ton to me classic and start for my 10th birthday i got the 1983 top set as a christmas gift um, all right owned today in a you know the vinyl binder nine sleeve binders um i collected baseball cards through the height of the hobby probably ending in 1990 uh, i was fortunate enough to pack pull uh, a michael jordan rookie card so i started collecting basketball cards and I very cool but that's when the Michael, that's when a 86 Fleer was like, you know, 50 cents, right? Yes. Oh, <laughs> you yes. to not open a pack, especially during your youth. So kudos to you. Oh, yeah. People, I mean, that's the whole idea of baseball cards was ripping them open. So the whole idea when I kept them uh, sealed, my friends thought I was nuts. <laughs> Who's laughing now, right, Steve? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. You know, Charizard, right? <laughs> Told me to grab a couple of white whales, so I figured much. I bought a collection, and we started having some. So, same thing, shadowless Charizards. Oh, you did! I was just, that's crazy. I was just messing around. You actually have one. That is. Go what is that? What What does that go for? Uh, that one there, probably twelve thousand somewhere in what? that. What? <laughs> free. Free. What? Um. Oh my God collect the regular charizards too so unlimited we have nines and then the guy has more of them and just the collection was very you guys what's the most commonly searched player name currently on vcp i would have to say ken griffey ken griffey really all right i for some reason i had it pegged for jeter very cool stuff thanks so much for sharing those jason and uh yeah yeah i i mean Part I part of me loves looking at other folks' collections like yours, and then I I look back at my collection and say I have a lot of work still left to do. <laughs> well, the, 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 uh, fun, you know, the fun is in the chase, you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's it, the fun is going out there and finding it, and yeah, and, very true. Um, that that that's the enjoyable part about collecting is collecting. Yeah, you know, the current items in your collection. What was the most difficult item for you to obtain, and why? That's a good question. I would say. I would say one of the most difficult, I have a series five box from 1978. Um, wow. All right. You know, so that's like the original 1978. Wow, I just love the artwork on the box itself. Yeah. The artwork on these is, is awesome. I agree with you there. That's one of my favorite things, you know, as far as display pieces, the artwork itself is, you know, awesome to, to look at. You won't um, be I'll able to see Mike during the course of this interview as he will not be available. <laughs> well we're trying to prove i'm trying to help you guys prove that you are you know that tim is mike and mike is <laughs> or maybe not right my mike is inaccessible at the moment so <laughs> i'm here i'm here to address any issues and concerns you may have <laughs> We're gonna have to do like a three-person interview one day. I just like... <laughs> Christian, oh, it's back to hobby talk. What's going on, Kurt? Hey, David. Um, as always, uh, it's fun to be here, and you know I love non-sports. And there's there's likely going to be some Batman references <laughs> and maybe some Elf references. We'll have to see. Oh, hey, listen, man, you're getting some stiff competition. The last few people I talked about are telling me about these massive hordes of Alf in the West Coast. <laughs> Keep it on lock and key. <laughs> for his pinnacle rookie card. And that's amazing. <laughs> my daughter ended up incorporating it in a book report when she was younger. That's and so cool. Derek, in the next spring training in 1993, where he was number 72. So, in <laughs> Of cards I've taken, let's say that nowadays have the most value monetarily, would probably be this Jeter card as a PSA 10. Yeah, sure. I love these for the art. God, that looks fantastic. Scooby Doo number two uh, took me eight years to find a 9.4 of this copy 
again, the first and second episodes, um, just very lowly distributed, very lowly published, um, not well taken care of, uh, hard to find. And our first guest loves his unopened almost as much as he loves his beloved Indians. <laughs> he's promised us tonight that he's going to open one of his slap 52 tops wax, wax packs with Mickey Mantle show. You. So please welcome Mark Wiles. <laughs> <laughs> our, our next guest is a jedi master in the world of unopened and rumor has it he used his jedi mind tricks to smack a pack searcher at target while in his car in the parking lot <laughs> some of you know him as tim but the rest of us know him as mike serencioni welcome mike to hobby talk <laughs> and last but not least, he spends his days working with cows. He spends his night tipping those cows. <laughs> and, <laughs> and somehow he still has time to be one of the most trusted people in the world of unopened sports cards. Please welcome Kurt Christensen to Hobby Talk Live. Not sure if I... The rip cam. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to uh, hold him up for the camera. But uh, I opted for this bad boy first. 91 what Bowman. Roddy freaking God. <laughs> <laughs> Two Nassar Little. Back to back. Not who we wanted. No. Oh for 2. Oh, no. Oh, this is at least good. <laughs> 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 Hey, Calvin, wait a minute. Hold on. This is for you. Big bucks, no whammy, stop! Stop it, Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my favorite now. <laughs> Larry, like... somebody. Neil Allen. <laughs> Grand Corner. <laughs> Cabler, Whit. <laughs> Dude, this is, the, this is the best. That's why pack you rip don't ever. open. That's why you don't open. <laughs> you know what? Best pack rip ever. <laughs> I got, I got the best show for you, David. Next, next time you have Shane rip baseball and say the names, and you have Kurt rip hockey and say the names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 